Hey everybody, Miguel here. In a previous video, I showed you how to use the APG management APIs. First, I showed you how to call APIs authenticating with basic auth credentials. Then, I enabled single sign-on in my organization and I showed you how to call the same API but using an OAS access token. That was all great. Today, I want to show you how to automate the process of getting this OAuth access token. But first, as a refresher, let's go over the manual approach to get this access token. Remember, the first step was to get a one-time passcode. So let's go to that URL again. And let me replace the zone name. Now APG asks us to log in with single sign-on. So I'm going to do that. We're taken now to the identity provider. Once you sign in, now you're taken back to APG where you get the one-time passcode. With this one-time passcode, we can now take this and make a call to the APG token endpoint to exchange the one-time passcode for an access token. So let's do that. Let me make sure this zone name is also correct. And let's send this request. I'm going to pipe this to JQ so we can see it formatted nicely. And there we have it. We get it. We got a response with the access token, the refresh token, and basically this is all you need. Uh, you can have, you can take this access token now and make a call to the APG management APIs. Let's do that. I'm going to export this. and we can send a call to the management APIs. Let me grab that curl command and there it is. So we're able to make an API call with an OAuth access token. Next, I'm going to show you how to get the same access token, but without all this complicated process where you have to go to a browser, log in, get a one-time passcode, exchange and exchange child for a token. So how exactly do we do this? It's actually not that much different. We're still going to send some sort of credentials and exchange that for an access token. The difference is that instead of sending credentials that are known to the identity provider, we're going to be sending a set of service credentials. Actually, it's called a machine user. And with that machine user's credentials, we're going to exchange it for an access token. Notice that this machine user does not live in the identity provider. This is a machine user that only lives in APG. So, so how do you get this machine user? There's a couple of ways. First, you can create an APG support ticket and ask the support team to create the machine user for you. The second way is that you can use a self-service tool to create this machine user. In order to use the tool, you have to be an APG single sign-on administrator for your organization. What that means is that you have to have the role called zone admin assigned to you within the organization. For the next part of the video, I'm going to show you how to use this tool to create a machine user. And then we're going to use this machine user to get an OAuth access token and make an API call. Let's do that. All right, so I have already downloaded this tool. Let's try it out. Let me see. So there it is, it's user management. We have the tarball. Let me extract it. We can see that inside the tarball, there, there, there were a few files in here. And in my case, I'm in macOS, so I'm going to be using this one right here. So the first thing you have to do when you're using this tool is that you can run it without any arguments or anything, and it will ask you to log in. So let's do that. All right, so we can clearly see that it's asking us to enter our credentials. One important thing to note here, the username and password that you enter here, this is not your credentials from the identity provider. These are the credentials that you have before single sign-on was enabled. As an administrator, when you first logged in to APG, you had to have an account from APG. 
these are the credentials that you're going to enter here. So let me do this. I don't have multi-factor enabled, so I'm just going to leave this empty. Great. So I am logged in. You only have to put your credentials once. After that, anytime you run the command again, it will read your credentials from the file system. Keep in mind that the tool is not actually storing your username and password. What it's actually doing is that it's getting an access token and storing that in the file system. And we can take a look at it. Let's see. You can see this is just a, an access token. Next, let's actually use the tool. So let's take a look at the help for this tool. Great. So let's create a machine user. And the command is create. All right, so right away we can see that the tool is actually listing the different identity providers that I, ha that I have configured. We know from earlier that uh, I'm using the Okta identity provider, so let's use that. Now it's asking me to enter the name of the machine user. So I'm just gonna give my email And finally, we need to enter a password for it. I'm just going to pick an easy password. And great, we have a, mach a new machine user. So just to confirm that it actually worked, let's run it again, but let's use the list command. So it's asking me again to enter the name of the identity zone. So let's use that. And there we go. We can see that it actually recognized the machine user that we created earlier. So I think we should be good for now. In the next step, we're going to use the credentials for this machine user and exchange them for an access token. Then we're going to be using that access token to make an API call. Let's go back to the text editor where I have the curl command. All right, let me write down the machine user information. And the password. Great. So earlier I mentioned that the process to get an access token with the machine user credentials is almost identical to the process that you do to get an access token with the one time passcode. And it really is technically the same curl command. The main difference is that instead of passing a passcode, we're going to be passing a username and password. So let's do that. Now, we have to be careful here. I cannot just send the username and password as is. Since we're telling the server that this is a form that's URL encoded, each of the fields themselves need to be URL encoded. Let me do that. So first, I'm going to encode the username. To do this, I am using an internal tool, so it's safe. In your case, please do not use any tool that you find online to do this. It's very dangerous, as you could be giving away sensitive, sensitive credentials. All right, so we have the username encoded. Now let's do the password. Great. We have both of them now. Next, let's put this in the actual body of the request.
and the password good so we have a completed curl command something else right now the machine user itself even though we created it within the identity zone it's, it doesn't actually have a role within the organization so I need to give the machine user a role so that it's able to make API calls so let's do that I'm going to go to the admin menu and under users we're going to add this machine user with a role alright so add new user and I'm gonna make him uh, an organization administrator and save we should be good for now alright so now we can use this curl command to get a token and finally make an API call with the token that we just got okay we go back to the terminal and there we go it's a successful call and we have an access token let's export the token great so we should be able to make an API call now using the token that we just obtained great and it's successful as well you can see we actually have a response body here let's recap first as the zone administrator I use the self-service tool to create a machine user within an identity zone. Then I gave that machine user a role within the organization. Finally, I use the curl command with the credentials from that machine user to obtain an access token. Finally, with that access token, I was able to make an API call. Hopefully, you can see how these last two steps, getting the access token and making the API call, can be easily automated once you have a machine user's credentials. Well folks, that's it for this topic today. If you found this video useful, don't forget to leave a like. If you have any questions or comments, drop them in the comments below or go to the APG community. Thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next video.